We try to prepare ourselves for any emergency, but some seem so small, we may overlook them. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of unexpected danger and caring people who answer our calls for help on Rescue 911. We begin on June 2nd, 1990, in the suburbs of Las Vegas, Nevada, as Danielle Ingersoll was working on her house alone. While her husband Joe was away on a fishing trip, Danielle had decided to clean and repair the solar heating system on the roof. I understand she got started real early, about 7 o'clock in the morning, and spent about three hours on top of the roof. I used to say you shouldn't go outside without any shoes. Sometimes there's strange looking bugs that fly in from the desert. She was always one that was a strong person around the house regarding the bugs and the mice and the spiders. At 12 noon, a call came in to Metro Communications. 911 emergency 47. I've been bitten by something. You, feel like I'm okay, let me transfer you to medical, ma'am. Stay yeah. on the line. Her call was transferred to emergency medical dispatcher John Darnell. Medical emergency. Hello? I heard nothing at first. Yeah? She sounded like an elderly female, said she was bitten by something, and said she felt like she was going to die. And she hung up? No. She's still on the phone. Hello, ma'am? Oh. I immediately tried to call back on the line. The line was busy. I was extremely concerned. Generally, someone will be very sick from a bite, but not feel that they're going to die. This dispatch is for Rescue 13. You're in lieu of Rescue 14. The nearest available rescue unit was dispatched from the airport six miles away when we continued she was getting little to no oxygen to her brain and they say four to six minutes and it's over within moments a second call came in fire department yes yes an ambulance Okay, you're on Carroll Circle, right? Yeah. Something bit you? Yeah, my... What was it, an insect or a snake or what? I don't know. Okay, we're on the way there. Um, you can't tell me any more about it, where you're bitten, on what part of your body? I don't know what you're saying. Do you know where you were bitten? Hello? Apparently she was blacking out, losing consciousness and inadvertently hanging up the phone. She sounded like somebody on her last breath of air. Because Las Vegas has an enhanced 911 system, John could read the caller's phone number off the screen automatically. Yes. Ma'am, this is the paramedics. We're on the way there. Okay, I wish you wouldn't hang up on me. Oh, I can't help it. We're on the way there. Do you know where you were bitten? My big right toe. A big what? Big right toe. What do you think it was that bit you? Spider. I can't talk. From what I could assess, she had anaphylactic shock. During anaphylactic shock, the lungs and throat constrict rapidly. Within minutes, a person's breathing and circulation can shut down completely. Do you know how long ago? Yeah. Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Yeah. Ten minutes ago. Nothing. No one's there with you? No. My throat is closing. 
I was extremely concerned about her airway closing from the effect of the shock. Dispatch, rescue 13. Rescue 13. Paramedic Ken Morgan headed to the scene. The delay in response time added to that critical factor. She was getting little to no oxygen to her brain, and they say four to six minutes, and it's over. Time was of the essence. Thank you. Okay, they've got that. If not what? They're, they've been coming from the airport now for eight minutes. This ran through my mind. When are they going to get there? I felt like she was drifting away. Go to the side gate. The back door. It's open. Dispatch Rescue 13, she's telling me now that if you can't get in through the front, go through the side gate and the back door's open. Do you have an ETA? Dispatch Rescue 13 is four minutes. Three minutes now. Copy, three minutes. They're going to be there in three minutes. I've taken calls where I've been. I know the last person a person's ever talked to. It's not a good feeling, especially when you feel as helpless as a human can feel. I know it's scary for you. Hello? I can't. I can't say. I know. I want you to. I want you to stay alert, though. Okay. I know what you're trying to do. Okay. I just. I don't want you. To, I don't want you to faint or become unconscious. Okay. I almost am. I know, I want you to fight it, okay? Paramedics arrived at Danielle's house within 12 minutes of her first call for help. The paramedics are there, they're out in the front, okay? I'm in the bedroom. Just tell them to come in. Dispatch Rescue 13, she's saying come in. She's in the bedroom. When we got to her, she did not even have the energy to uh, hold up the phone anymore. Dispatch 13 is located. Okay, we got you. Bye. Bye-bye. When we first looked at her, we knew right away this was serious. She had a real awful gray look to her. She had no blood pressure. She had no basic vital signs at all. It's very conceivable had we have been delayed any short amount of time, there'd have been nothing we could have done for her. The second ambulance arrived almost immediately. Initially, we put her on some oxygen. We wanted to get that circulation back into her brain again. We had to give her some medication to stop the uh, reaction to the bite. We didn't get any response at all from her, and at that point, we started getting real concerned. All right, here we go. Watch the line. We decided it was time to get rolling. It gives you a rattle inside because you realize that this patient is close to death and you're very limited in the time you've got to keep the patient alive. Rescue 13 on channel 2, Adam. This is Dr. Cecchio at Sunrise. Paramedics radioed to head to the hospital where Dr. Leonard Cecchio was on duty. She was experiencing a massive cardiovascular collapse. It was a very tight call all the way to the hospital. Everything we tried wouldn't come back with a, a positive response. One of the last things we do before we unload is zap some vital signs out real quick. And at that point, it was the first time we actually got a decent blood pressure on her. And in fact, it wasn't a good blood pressure, but 60 is better than zero. It was evident to me that what we were doing was starting to work, but I knew she still wasn't out of the woods. By the time Danielle was wheeled into the emergency room, she had regained consciousness. She spent four days in the hospital. The doctors found no sign of lasting injury to her heart or brain. I don't want to do it again to have it fun. On the last day of her stay, Danielle received some very special visitors. Hi. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I don't know if I could ever tell you exactly how I feel about him. I mean, I, I just, it's just absolutely overwhelming. Feeling good now? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. 
Oh, this is the guy that got us there. Oh my God! How are you? Just... Knowing that she was so near death, and then to see such a jubilant, wonderful lady was like the difference between night and day. You had me worried. <laughs> it was just, it was very, very good to see that. I wish that I could tell you how good it feels to know that there was someone out there when I called to help. This was my life, literally, that they saved, and I love them, I adore them. Danielle and her husband Joe have since had an infestation of black widow spiders Jennifer, removed from their shed. Fortunately, anaphylactic shock reactions to black widow bites are not common among healthy adults. She needs to carry an anaphylaxis kit with her so that should she get bitten by another one, she can administer epinephrine immediately before it gets into the full-blown reaction she had this time, because it could kill her very quickly, as it almost did this time. Since Mom had her accident, I've thought very much about what my life would be like if she didn't make it, and it scares me. I don't think I'm ready to be without my mom. Sounds crazy, as old as I am, but I love her more than anybody in this whole world. Oh, that's so cute.